wasn't nervous until like right this second, like suddenly I'm like, whoa. Um, but yeah, so my name's Will, uh, Will Ray, um, spelled R-E-A but pronounced Ray. Um, I'm an illustrator, muralist and sign writer. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd start by introducing myself a little bit. So I'm South Yorkshire based. Um, I'm also an educator as well. Um, I graduated from Sheffield Hallam University with a first class honours um, in illustration in 2019. Um, and I now specialise in creating public artwork on indoor and outdoor surfaces, alongside sign writing, teaching and um, other illustration commissions. Um, I've kind of started to sort of, I've not used the term artist just yet, but I think like, to think I'm kind of an artist, I do anything creative, a lot of creative facilitation and a lot of, yeah, I get commissions for basically anything that I can fit to, which has been quite, quite good. Um, so yeah, I kind of sat down on uh, probably Wednesday night, because Tuesday night I was probably a bit too tired and still didn't know how soon this project, this, this talk was going to come. But um, I thought I'd break down like the kind of the term monumental and what it meant to me um, and how I could kind of approach it in a presentation. Um, so I looked at like the fact that throughout my life and career so far, I've had some monumental opportunities. Um, lots of things have been of monumental significance. Um, I've done some monumental cock-ups or mistakes and then I've learned lessons from them. Um, I've put a lot of effort in, um, which you might see in what I'm about to talk about. Um, I maybe work a bit too hard sometimes, but um, it's yeah led to monumental achievements. So it's been it's been quite nice. Um, so yeah, to start with, I grew up in, near Warwick, and I went to um, Southam College, which is like in between Banbury and Leamington Spa. Um, and I actually went to Manchester Metropolitan University straight out of sixth form. Um, and I was doing product design, uh, BSC, um, and I realised like within three months that like, that's not where I wanted to be. Um, I was kind of going out a bit more than I was studying, and I was, um, yeah, making like ergonomic handles for like um, for like wheelchairs and stuff. And I was like, I want to be a bit more creative in my life. So I'm actually a dropout. Um, so I dropped out of that course, and I came to Sheffield Hallam University, um, which was the best decision I think I ever made for like my productivity, my career, my mental health. Um, it was just something that I thoroughly enjoyed um, and I'm going to talk about a bit about now. Um, so while I was at Sheffield Hallam, um, I actually ended up doing a lot more out of uni than I did in uni. Um, I got a first then I, I put a lot of effort into the course, um, but I kind of want to talk about what I did alongside my studies because I feel like um, that's what led to where I am now, um, kind of being a bit proactive and chasing down commissions and doing work. So the first thing that I ever did, which wasn't a university commission, was uh, with APG Works, which is uh, down near on Sydney Street uh, in town. And um, I entered uh, an open call for a theme called Up There, which was a kind of collaborative screen print night. Um, we had like, I think Rob Lee had a piece, Lisa Maltby had a piece. I was there as this like fresh faced student, like whoa. Um, and this was the piece I designed. Um, and it kind of, yeah, started putting me in the right places on social media. And I started posting these kind of things on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, and yeah, to, also talking to people. Um, and it led to sort of more commissions. One of these, which was like the straight sort of week after, uh, I got a call from Bungalows and Bears, which um, they don't do as much illustrative posters and stuff anymore. But um, yeah, they kind of saw that Fly Machines print and then I ended up doing, yeah, this series of, um, I started off with that style, which was kind of similar to what I did in the Fly Machines. I used the same like alphabet. Uh, and then we kind of just started doing like, I got, I got to kind of practice my own style and um, I got to kind of like do something different each month and each week. Um, and I was doing these for, fairly little money like I think I was doing for like 70 pounds a pop which now I would charge a lot more but at the time as a student it was like really really cool um, so these were on display and these went up for quite a while um, then also which is quite fitting to today um, we've got Matt from Union Street who's talking but Matt was one of the probably the first people uh, that I think um, supported me and Union Street's great it like reinvested its profit into um, kind of worthwhile causes and I think at that point, Matt thought I was a worthwhile cause to invest in. Um, and he gave me, yeah, just the odd commission um, here and there to start off with A boards and paint signage. Um, and we'll go on and talk about how uh, Union Street have actually helped me sort of throughout some pivotal points in my kind of career. Um, yeah, also at this point, I was 
living with the stage manager, well, he was an events manager at, at uni, events management student at uni, uh, and then he ended up becoming this, the full stage manager at the lead mill. Um, and yeah, I managed to kind of get uh, a little scale mural in the, on the mezzanine level in, in the lead mill. So this was all while I was still studying at uni and I was getting good grades, but I was just out and about, like trying my hardest to like get paid commissions and just sort of graft and, and make things work. Um, so yeah, there's me graduating. So yeah, when I graduated, um, it was like a weird moment. I was thinking, oh, what do I do? Um, what do I do with my life? Like I actually started straight away getting a job. There's, it just moved. Um, getting a job just because I thought like, uh, I can't be a dream chaser for the foreseeable because now I don't have like a student loan and all of that. Um, I yeah, got a job at Bag It Don't Bin It, which was still creative, but it was quite, um, it was quite repetitive and it was quite kind of like menial. Um, a kind of, so yeah, it's a screen print, an eco-friendly screen printing factory that specialised in tote bags on Rutland Road in Kellam. Um, and yeah, one of, the, one of the moments that I thought I'd, I'd really need to leave was when we had a, Elton John's new book came out and it was like this really kind of creepy image of his face. And I was in like the, the digital um, department and I was printing like, I think it was like 5,000 Elton John bags. And like I was going to sleep and I was blinking and I could see his face um, <laughs> and it was horrible. And like the fact that he looked directly at the camera as well in that photo, so he was looking into my soul and I thought, <laughs> I need to get out of here and I enjoyed it and I loved it and um, I've actually commissioned, I've actually had some printing done by them since and I will keep in touch with them but um, I was looking for the next thing. Um, and the next thing that came for me, yeah, was um, an open call on Facebook I saw, um, Orchard Square Shopping Centre in Sheffield. Um, they said they wanted a big piece of public art painting um, to kind of like, I think the brief was under the theme of Sheffield and the world of retail. We want to brighten up an overlooked space in the city. Um, so I came, initially I did a really, really garish pitch, which um, they sat me down and said, we like you, but can you tone it down a bit? And this was the toning it down. So, um, but yeah, this process as well involved, I think a few people that I'd, I'd met in my life, helping with the kind of like putting, put me forward in, in boardrooms and in meetings. So. Um, yeah, all the little bits that I'd just done um, previously kind of led up to this and the fact that I got accepted. Um, so I won this commission um, and the first thing that I thought I needed to do was get um, the access sorted. Um, this was like a bit of, I don't know why I put this in, but like um, I've got a license to drive a cherry picker. But then we basically realised pretty quickly after that that um, the square itself had like a gradient on it so we couldn't even use the cherry picker. So I just spent £500 got a license to not kill but drive a cherry picker and it's like my party trick like if someone's like got one fun fact about yourself it's like I've got a license to drive a cherry picker really. um, but yeah so we ended up getting fixed scaffolding um, fitted and um, I'd also like to add all the really good photos in this presentation uh, by Joe Joe Horner who's the photographer here today um, I think I've, that that's his tag there if you want to see him but um, yeah I've learned that um, a lot of the projects I do are very visual and very interesting, so reinvesting some of the profits into capturing them has been um, really helpful. But yeah, so this was the project. This is actually um, from phase two, which was the second bit of commission along the side. Um, yeah, some photos of me in action, but it was a really, really arduous ta task, and it was one of the, the biggest, thi well, the, the biggest thing I've ever taken on. And also, um, I was, qualified but not experienced I think I'd say um, so I knew I could do it but I had a lot of people taking a lot of like kind of risks on the fact that I could pull it off and I did pull it off but I yeah for a couple of nights I was like oh god what am I doing this is huge um, and yeah it was I, I pulled it off so it was fine so that is the the mural I don't know if anyone's been past um, TK Max and Costa and stuff but that's it there and it's it's yeah it was a love hate thing like I love it um, but like it took a lot of effort a lot of time I took it on in I think like November I had a meeting and I was like yeah I'll do it like straight away in like three weeks and ended up sort of going through from November till March of the following year and then ended up taking another extended commission to do a bit more in like July but um, I basically spent a whole year on it um, worked in all sort of weather conditions and learned a lot of things that I shouldn't have done um, for future future commissions. But I mean, it, 
yeah, it came to fruition and it worked. Um, so I'm going to show you a short video um, just that my friend Andrew that I lived with at the time got, I got him a little commission to kind of capture some of the project. Um, so I'm going to play that now. And um, yeah, we also got permission from a guy called Only Real to use his music. So um, yeah, I should be all right. There should be sound. Toby! Toby! <laughs> Is it a sunken sofa? Yeah. Let's just see. Yeah. Yeah, so that was actually phase one, but we, we ended up doing a bit more um, along the side when they realised like half the square was painted and half the square wasn't painted. Um, but yeah, Andrew Bainbridge was the videographer that did that, if anyone needs a good vid videographer. Um, he's left the city now, but he's a great, he's a great guy. Um, so yeah, so that um, also led... No, that led to, um, yeah, after that, I, th I was kind of sitting around and thinking, what can I do next? And um, yeah, something came up with the Association of Illustrators and the Directory of Illustration. They've got this big um, awards um, kind of, yeah, awards thing called the World Illustration Awards, um, which is probably like one of the biggest um, awards in the kind of like creative illustration world. It probably is the biggest um, award and I entered it in the site specific category um, kind of not thinking anything anything of, of it um, I actually paid 50 pounds to enter and I was like oh, what am I doing like paying money to enter a competition um, but yeah it actually came round to the um, to the awards itself and I won the professional site specific um, award for that for the Orchard Square mural um, and Joe took this lovely picture as well like this is all of Joe's lovely work but yeah um, it was a really surreal moment. I was so ecstatic and it's opened uh, a lot of doors. Um, the fact that the mural is huge and, and, and really impressive, like it is great, but then also like I think I've started to kind of like get noticed in different countries and different cities. So um, yeah, hopefully this is the start of something bigger, if you can get any bigger. But yeah, after that, um, so after I finished Orchard Square, um, the dreaded like coronavirus pandemic kind of hit. Um, so we actually kind of, it was in March when I was like finishing up the last little bits and I was trying to get back in to like finish it uh, and I did finish it and then suddenly like they closed the gates on, on the Orchard Square and I had to kind of like go home and think like what am I doing with my life? Like I've painted a big mural and I've quit my job um, and I have nothing next and like, now Covid's hit. So I decided to move house don't know why, <laughs> but I, um, I thought uh, like I needed to move out of shared accommodation. I was kind of done with that. So I moved to a place called Creswell in Workstock, which I still currently live, um, which actually now in hindsight is a monumental mistake. I, it cost like 60 pounds in a taxi to get back after a night out. And um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't drinking that year. I took a year off drinking. I didn't, didn't put this in my presentation, but I was like, right, COVID, like this is gonna go somewhere. I can't be going out anymore. I need to change my my habits and my life. So I stopped drinking, I moved to a village um, and I thought, oh, I'm Mr. Big, whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah, but then I was like, no, this isn't, this isn't me. Um, I need to get back to Sheffield. So yeah, if anyone is renting an apartment near Sharavel, let me know after this. <laughs> but um, yeah, so COVID hit, I was sort of sat home wondering, oh, what, what, what do I do in my life? I was thinking, oh, actually, to be honest, I'm a bit of a dream chaser. Like I've, I quit my job, took on a mural and had, 
I had about twelve thousand pounds in my account. So I, well, that's a lot of money. That, but it like kind of kicks up. So I, I knew I could sit sit it out for a bit. But um, yeah, the actual first thing that came in was from Matt at Union Street, like kind of like a turnaround. But um, we did a COVID compliance manual, um, which was just really. It came in at like the perfect time when my brain was just like, as everyone's was, like going to shits and. Um, yeah, and you're just thinking, what am I doing with my life? But this came in and it kind of like thought, it made me think, okay, actually like things will pick up and things will work. So I did that. Um, and then that also led on to doing the frontage of the Union Street just down, downstairs. And we did like a nice, um, it was actually a smashed window, wasn't it? But then we replaced it with a nice quote um, from the Human League. Um, and just to kind of like, I think it was just to celebrate the fact that we thought we were getting out of the pandemic, but I don't know if we did at that point, but. <laughs> Um, it was just nice for me to get out and talk to people again and realise that I wasn't stranded and I wasn't kind of like, I wasn't making wrong decisions in my life. Um, and then, yeah, this led to us, after that, there was a second mural at the lead mill. And when I'd kind of sharpened up my, um, my skills, I went back and I did one in the green room where the, um, the bands actually sit. So I think I've had the vaccines posing in front of it and I had Clint, Clint Boone the other week, like, tagged me on Twitter and I was like, Whoa, this is cool. <laughs> But um, yeah, there was that. Uh, then there was also from the sign writing at Union Street, um, the guys at Steam Yard opened a new coffee shop on Sharavale, so I painted their signs. Um, and then also, just very recently, I did uh, Westway's Primary School, so a series of smaller murals. Um, this is literally just like, probably like a tenth of what I've been up to since COVID stopped, but um, they're just the highlights. Uh, and then very, very recently, um, as I mentioned before, I do design education. Um, I took on a project with the, funded by the VNA to teach local secondary school kids. Uh, and we're doing a project called um, Reflecting Sheffield. Um, and we're basically, each student is producing their own laser etched plaque, which is gonna go on display at the Millennium Galleries in April, I think. But yeah, so I've basically been doing loads of, loads of stuff, <laughs> like more than I can sort of handle, but I am quite just about handling it. Um, so yeah, that was like a kind of whistle stop of like some of the highlights of what I've done. Um, and I just thought, instead of just standing here and going, oh, this is me, this is what I do, um, I wanted to kind of like try and provide some insight and some tips, um, but I don't know if you'll need them. But yeah, I'm definitely still learning, but what have I learned so far? Um, the first thing that I learned when I graduated is that you can afford to live in a shared accommodation in Sheffield on a part-time job wage. So a lot of you lot are probably in your own houses now and you've, you've probably got past that part of life. But some of you are still students. I think there was some of the um, students I teach at Sheffield Hallam on at the architecture course. I don't know where they are. They've disappeared. There you are. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so this, will, this will work with you. Um, basically, if you, when you graduate, if you've got a good group of mates, you can afford to like, go just off Exel Road or somewhere, get a house, um, pay the council tax on a student house, and you will be able to stay in Sheffield. Um, start wearing a watch. That is, uh, it's kind of one of those things that's like, I like how it makes you look and it's like, well, you're smart, but also that's just a kind of like, um, it's kind of like a bit of a way of saying, organize your life, like plan, plan ahead, like um, use your calendars. Like I realized that, yeah, most of my time is like time management. Like, I do a load of work, but I've, I'm learning to kind of like, um, over anticipate how much time things take. Um, so yeah, that's what I, I kind of, last summer I, I kind of took on so much and I still am, still am doing it, which is a bit silly, but I can't say no because I'm freelance. But um, I've started to over anticipate how long things are gonna take. So if, I, if I've got a mural, I'll add on like three weeks because it might rain. Um, and I'll also plan in time to design the murals before I start painting them rather than just like, it'll take a month and I'll do it all in a month. Um, so yeah. Um, another one which is quite, quite honest of me, I need to ask for more help. Um, I am doing loads um, and I'm earning enough now to actually sort of potentially pay for assistance and pay for people to help me um, and reinvest some of this money that I'm earning. Um, and yeah, I think this needs to come very soon because I'm like, I'm doing well, but I'm like, it's a lot. So yeah, if anyone wants to help me out, <laughs> have a chat at the end. Um, I need to, it's really good to reinvest some of your earnings into capturing your story. So I mentioned this before, but yeah, one of the big things that's kind of allowed me to continue to kind of like keep up my, um, 
my momentum and my presence in the community is to commission Joe. Um, most jobs now I kind of put in a, it's about two hundred pounds of the the sort of the fee back into the commission, um, and I kind of yeah get like a making of shoot and a and a final shoot of the big projects I do. Um, and it's just been great to kind of like get these really good photos that Joe takes and it, it just makes you look really professional. Uh, and then finally, Sheffield is one of the friendliest places on earth. Um, I just learned this since 2015 to now. Um, and then also moving out, I was like, I didn't realise how much I'd miss it. But um, yeah, just events like this, like you realise that you can be in the right place at the right time. Um, you can talk to the right people um, and everyone is most people are very friendly so yeah thank you very very much keep in touch um, I haven't got any business cards because I only found out on Tuesday but my email is will at willustration.co.uk and my social media is willustration um, follow me and yeah keep in touch thank you very much everyone <laughs> yeah. um, thank you Will um, so we're going to open the floor up to questions but yeah, has anyone got any questions for you? Great. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that before Orchard Square you had some feelings of self-doubt and yeah. you thought it was like you, you were going into something that you knew you were qualified for but you don't have the experience. Yeah. How do you deal with moments like that with like imposter syndrome and that sort of thing? Because you clearly did a uh, good job but how would you... I think I was lying next to my ex-girlfriend crying. I think that was how I was dealing with it. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I definitely actually remember one evening being like, I am a dream, I was probably really drunk and I was just like, I'm a dream chaser, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, like, I should just get a real job. Uh, um, but, I don't know, I just kept going. <laughs> um, that's really bad to say because I think, I think, like, knowing that you can talk to people who are experienced, so I did, I sent some messages to... Um, like Lisa Maltby and Kid Acne and some of the bigger muralists in Sheffield. I sent a message to Rob Lee, but it didn't get back to me. Um, uh, just ask it, yeah, yeah. I, well, I think, I think he had Orchard Square originally and then they cancelled him because his fee was too high, so that's probably why I didn't reply. But, um, yeah, basically talk to people, um, ask questions, ask for advice, um, and don't think too far ahead. Like I've learned that now, um, just because, yeah, I can get too far in the future and then I start to freak out. So I just play it day by day. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much. Anyone else? Yeah. I obviously studied with you. Yeah. So I, I was going through all the same tribulations at uni. Yeah. You say how like you were spending time out of uni, like getting these jobs and meeting these people. How did you best go about that? How did you... <laughs> get to know these people and get these things like while being a student how did you get through to people yeah I think I've always been like it might be detrimental to me but I've always been a bit of a extrovert um like I, I like to introduce myself and I like to talk to people so I, I did always make sure that I was in the right places at the right times and do you know when you get that like weird moment where you're like oh god there's someone that I want to work with over there I kind of like managed to just push that down and walk over and have a chat um, and yeah, it, it it did wonders, but yeah, like things things like the the collaborative event, like you've just done some stuff with uh, Picture House Social, like it's just things like that, like looking for for um, events and and things that you can collaborate with, where you're kind of you're getting in through a, a pre-existing event, or a and then you can kind of create your own path after you've kind of done these things that other people have organised. But but yeah, I think. Basically, just talk to the right people, be present. It was difficult during COVID, but now um, just keep doing creative mornings, keep speaking to people, which should be fine. It's kind of asking for future students as well, not just me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. But yeah, and the students that are here and future students, like, just, just get to creative mornings, um, get to all these events, like, be, be there. Go to, like, Pollen Market and Peddler Market and all these things, because you never know when the people that you work with might, might walk into your life. So. I haven't paid Will to plug Creative Mornings, by the way. No, I was, pl I was plugging it before I even like, stood here. I was like, yeah, I put it in my like, research and process file at uni, being like, oh, I love Creative Mornings, yeah, it's good. great. Yeah. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Yeah. yeah. Do you have like, a dream commission or something that you uh, to shoot for? I think, yeah, I think in terms of like the type of commissions, like the big murals and all that stuff, like I've, I've done... 
I've done like the big, I've done what I wanted to do, but I think it's the clients that I think I'm like dreaming of now. So I'd probably like to work with like maybe Patagonia on like a, on a mural. I think that'd be really like in store. That would be like a really cool commission. Um, I'd like to paint something in a different country. So I've been looking at like um, international arts festivals and stuff and now I've got like a World Illustration Award. Way. I can send an email and sort of be like, I'm part of the world, not just like South Yorkshire. Um, but yeah, it's just the, the financial implications of that and getting myself and paint and everything over to another country. But yeah, I think soon I'd like to just expand my horizons and go abroad. Ooh. That was me. That was you, not me. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? No. Okay then. Um, well, thank you very much to Will. A big round of applause for Will. Thank you. I, I did have a question, but I just wanted to say that we yeah. love you at True Now. Yeah, so I didn't put you in the presentation, but I've worked with you, yeah. I just wanted to say that we're really proud of everything you've done. Thank you. you. Yeah, as well. Like, I feel a bit guilty that people are here, but there are so many more people that have like helped, helped fund this like dream and um tune off for one of them so thank you very much for the commissions <laughs> <laughs> cheers anybody else before I and you can speak to me afterwards if you don't want to talk in front of everyone yeah, i'll be exactly. about for a bit exactly um, okay massive round of applause for one <laughs>